Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and in this series of videos we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 7. These are the problems for group B. Note accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help you if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still do not understand the concepts, then either email or telephone an instructor to get help with that understanding. All right, so uh, problem 7-50B is about preparing a bank reconciliation. Um, I am going to point you to exercise um, let's see here, 7-31B, all right, um, is very similar to this in that I believe we had to do a bank reconciliation for that particular uh, exercise, um, yeah, 731 and 732, pen here, and 7-32. Um, also, uh, go back to the on the student community under the business group and the math for business slash applications um, this is a section um, on the left hand side under the business group that uh, covers bank reconciliations extensively that's where all the theory is um, sure I uh, present a little bit of theory for chapter 7 here um, but I went extensively into the bank reconciliations in the math for uh, business slash application section under the business group. So I'm not, uh, you know, if you need to work on the theory, that's where you're going to find it at. Okay. Now I realize that this slide is a little bit, uh, this image is a little bit small. Sorry about that. Um, can't fit everything on the slides, you know, only have so much, uh, uh, real estate to be able to work with here. All right, so um, doing a bank rec here. It says the October bank statement uh, just arrived from Safety Bank. So here's the bank statement. And to prepare the bank rec, uh, you gather the following additional data. Um, these following checks were still outstanding. On October 31st, um, the treasurer deposit 400, but his deposit does not appear on the bank uh, statement. The bank statement includes a 745 deduction for check 1668 written by Harry's Hot Dogs rather than Julio's Hamburgers. Julio's Hamburgers notified the bank of the bank error. Julio's cash shows a balance of 12,071 on October 31st. And the EFT for $700 was a uh, collection of rent revenue, and the EFT deposit for $225 was a collection on account. Okay, and it says prepare the bank rec for October 31st and record the journal entries called for by the reconciliation, including an explanation for each entry. Okay, so um, you know you're given the bank statement here, but you are not being given a check register. Instead, you're being given all this uh, verbiage here. All right, so let's call this our check register or our cash account, and this down here will be our bank statement. All right, so um, it tells us that for D. Their cash account shows a balance of 12,071. So the balance is 12,071. Now, we want to look and um, the following checks are outstanding on um, October 31st. All right, so these are checks that are 
in our check register, but not on the bank statement. Right? So um, basically what they're saying here is, is that these checks, um, uh, which have cleared the bank, would have been part of this $12,071 balance. And these are the outstanding ones. So what's going to happen is, is that they're going to end up on our bank statement. But what we're, remember, what we're doing is we're comparing the register to the bank statement. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to glean what information um, is on the bank statement that is not in our check register. So I'm looking at my checks and it's telling us, oh yeah, these are outstanding checks. So yeah, they were part of the register. These checks cleared the bank, so they were part of the register. And I don't have any other issues as far as my checks are concerned. Um, but I do have deposits here, okay, because it says down here um, I have a $850 rent deposit and a $225 uh, deposit and a, an $8 in interest. So if I come down here, um, it says here, da -da 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 -da. the EFT for $700 was a collection of rent revenue. Um, and the EFT deposit for 225 was a collection on account. Uh, so, um, I believe that this 700 is an error. Okay. It should have been 850. So just be aware that that is an error in the uh, textbook. All right. So for my balance, I want I have to add in the EFT for the rent of 850 and the EFT for the deposit of 225 and I have an interest on the bank. So interest, and we're going to add these in, right? Interest of eight dollars. So that's thirteen seven eight a thousand eighty-three. So that's one zero eight three. That's four fifteen. 13,154. Okay, so that's the total, subtotal. Um, okay, so we've taken care of this here. We've taken care of these here. Now we have our, um, you know, charges. So this is less. We have a service charge of 35. We have a NSF for 72 and we have an NSF for 186 so that's uh, 713 10 19 293 so that's a, a deduction 293 so 13 154 minus 293 gives me Twelve thousand eight sixty one as my uh, check register balance. Okay, so that's uh, my check register. That's what we're getting to. So I took care of that. There's nothing else on this bank statement um, that belong. You know that is not in the check register. Okay. All right. So I'm going to erase all of that. And now let's work on the uh, bank statement. And so remember this here, we're going to treat that as an error right now. Okay, so for my bank statement, I have a beginning balance of, let me do this all in blue maybe. So bank, and I have a balance of 12,000, 555. All right, now it 
it says here. Let's add in. Oh, okay, so these are outstanding checks, so that's a deduction. We're, we're looking for additions. So it says on October 31st, deposited 400, but the deposit doesn't appear on the bank statement. So we have a 1031 deposit for $400. Okay, so that takes care of that. The bank statement includes a $745 uh, deduction for a check, for check 1668, written by Harry's rather than by Julio's Hamburgers. Julio's notified the bank of the bank error. Okay. So basically what has happened is, as part of um, the beginning balance, um, part of the balance on the bank statement, um, a deduction was taken out of Julio's hamburgers in the amount of $745. In other words, they made the bank made an error. Um, they took Harry's hot dogs uh, check and applied it against uh, Julio's hamburgers. So the um, the accountants for Julio's hamburgers said, "Oh, hey, look at you know. I mean, obviously that's not right. You know, you've deducted $745 more." Right? And they contacted the bank, and the bank said, oh, yeah, we made a mistake. All right? So um, we're going to, uh, let's call this check 1668 error. And we have to add back in the 745, meaning they're going to make that correction. Okay? And this type of thing does happen in the real world. Okay. And if you had watched the theory videos, I said they can get more, you know, these bank statements, these bank reconciliations can get more and more complicated. And if you've been, you know, if you had math for business or math applications um, and you saw that the statements got a little bit more progressively difficult here in the financial accounting, you know, they've gotten, uh, you know, with each one, each bank reconciliation you've done, you've been presented a new situation, you know, and I had to, and in the theory videos, I had talked about, you know, situations like this happening. So you have to be aware of it um, and what it means. Notice on the bank statement, you don't see the 745 whatsoever. Okay, um, that would have been an, a notification um, that you would have, you know, had with your bank. Okay, so uh, that error would have to be corrected, and you're going to add that 745 back in. All right. Um, and then, okay, so now let's see what D says here. Julio's cash account shows a balance. Okay, so we did that and we did that. All right, so all of those are done. So that's all we're going to add in here. And that comes out to 1145. So um, we end up with uh, 10, 10, 7, 3 as a subtotal. Now, less. Um, these are all of our outstanding checks right here, okay? And I'm not, since I don't have space, I'm not going to rewrite them. I'm just going to say this is outstanding check total, all right? Just realize that I would write these all down, all right? But I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to add them up, 323 plus 81 plus 27 plus... 147 plus 215 plus 46 gives me a total of $839. So that would have been my total, right? So we're going to less 839. Oops, 13700 minus 839. And that gives me $12,861 as my new uh, bank statement balance okay and since that matches that right um, that means we're correct we're spot on so uh, again this was a little bit more complicated um, I'm not going to go back over it uh, if you didn't understand something along the way 
go ahead and pause and rewind and watch the video. I think I did an adequate explanation of where I was pulling the numbers from and why I was pulling them. Okay. The thing to remember here is, is that for my check register, you know, I don't have a check register. All right. So I have to glean the information. You know, there, I'm told what the beginning balance is, but I have to glean the information from the transactions here to be able to apply it um, to create uh, my adjustments to my check register using the information on my bank statement. Okay. Um, and then of course with my uh, bank rec, all right, you know, see, you know, the bank statement side of it, you know, see where I'm pulling that information from. All right. And so with that, um, you know, again, if you didn't understand it, you know, pause and rewatch the video, um, uh, and think about, you know, what you're doing with the bank statement and with the bank reconciliation. And if you still don't understand something, then feel free to contact an instructor. Okay.